All right, in this video, we are going to try to use Turtle Graphics, that's Python 3, and we're going to try to create a flower, a simple flower, just a little drawing exercise to practice our programming skills. Uh, so on my desktop here, I have uh, a file I call flower.py, and I'm going to set up the, the basic stuff you need for every Turtle Graphics program. First, uh, I'm going to import turtle, and at the very end, I always need to have turtle.done that keeps the window open all right and then um, I want to probably specify the width and height of my screen so I'm going to use uh, width and height of 640 by 480 so that should work on most screens no matter how big or small they are it, Canvas size will be a, a little bit small on a, on a large screen, but that's fine. Um, so I have to get the screen, um, which is a singleton, the from the turtle package. So turtle dot screen. Okay, so this is a class, and it returns the screen object. A singleton means the class will only return ever. It will only ever return one instance of the screen. Right. So even though you might call this multiple times, you'll always get that same single instance back, which is singleton. All right. Um, so now we need to set up the, the canvas size. And that's screen dot screen size. And we pass in the width and the height. That's canvas. This will be window size, and that is screen dot setup, and that's going to be width and height as well. But for the window size, because it's got uh, some scroll bars, we want to add a little bit of a fudge factor there, so that way we don't have the scroll bars. So we want we want this to be just a little bit bigger than our canvas. So that way the, the window doesn't have the scroll bars. All right, then we want to make our turtle. Don is what I name him. You can name him whatever you want. So again, turtle up here is our package or our library. We are referencing the package using the dot operator to access, the accessor operator to access uh, functionality on or within the package. So one of the things within the package is the turtle class. We know it's a class because it's capitalized. And then we instantiate that class using left and right parentheses. So this is going to create a turtle object and store it in this variable Don. All right, so Don has a speed. And we'll start him out at the slow speed, but throughout uh, throughout this programming experience, we're going to probably modify that because sometimes he, he becomes annoyingly slow. All right, so, uh, and then if I ever want to hide the turtle, I can run that. So I'm going to comment that out for now, but later I might want to hide turtle. So we won't see him drawing the stuff, we'll just see the lines. <clears throat> so that's what hide turtle does. And then um, basically because I have an issue here because I, got, I have two monitors and um, Turtle Graphics seems to want to open the window on the other monitor. I have to add a little bit of a delay before everything gets moving. So I'm going to import time. And then here I'm going to say time dot uh, sleep. 2.2 seconds should give me enough time to drag the window over and then we can see the animations start. Okay, so you probably won't need time.sleep, but you can you can use it if you want. So that's gonna sleep for two seconds. So let's run this, and this is just the basic setup for um, Turtle Graphics. So Python 3 flower. All right, and here's our window, and it stays open. There's our turtle in the middle. We haven't told Don to do anything, so he's just sitting there. Um, so let's close this and start making a flower. All right, there's a lot of different ways you can make a flower. Um, first, we could decide where we want the flower. Um, 
we can start with, I guess, the base of the flower uh, at zero, zero. That's fine, and then we can move it later. So we probably want to say non dot pin size, and we can make the pin size large. So this will be um, the stem. We're going to draw the stem first, and then um, non dot uh, pin color. And we can make that some some form of green. So I'm going to use the hash color codes, which is RGB. There's two hexadecimal characters for red, two hexadecimal characters for green, and two hexadecimal characters for blue. So I want a sort of a dark green. So you have to imagine that's going to be a low amount of red, uh, probably mid-range green, because we want it to be a dark green, and then a little bit of blue. All right, so. That's not bad. Um, maybe a little bit darker. Bring this down to 22, seven. There you go, it's a little bit darker. So that's gonna be the stem color. And uh, then we can say don dot pin up. Don, do we wanna move Don anywhere? Um, we're just gonna leave him where he starts. Uh, at zero zero, so I guess we don't need to pin up and pin down, uh, and and we basically want to draw the the stem. So how high do we want the stem to be? Um, so maybe we say that's uh, 100 and 150. So we could say <clears throat> don dot go to, and so this is an x and y coordinate. If we want to draw the stem straight up, that's going to be um, we're going to keep the x value the same because that's the left or rightness, right? And then the y value is the up or downness, right? So we want a positive y, so we want to go up 150 pixels, right? And then we can save this and run this and see where we're at. X is not defined. Oh, x is 0. That's where we start out. Okay, so that's sort of our uh, starting point. That's our, our stem, and we can add a couple leaves if we want, and then we can, um, we can make a big circle on top with different colors inside. That might be one way we could do this, or we could do a circle and a bunch of circles around it. Uh, there's lots of different ways you could make flowers. <clears throat> so let's, uh, let's focus on the leaf for now. Um, so let's say the leaf We need to look at this and see where we want our leaves. So let's say we the head of the flower is up here, right? So that takes up about a third of our stem, and we might want you know two leaves down here, right? So we might want a leaf uh, at the halfway point, or maybe a little bit below that. So however tall this is, we might want to make a leaf here, and then a leaf here. So we have to figure out exactly where we want that to be. So um, we might say if this is the halfway point, uh, we probably want a quarter down or an eighth down from that. So we want a leaf at probably three eighths and then on the other side at two eighths. Maybe we, we're, we're just playing around with the numbers so uh, <clears throat> we'll see how it goes and we can we can adjust it. Okay, so for the leaf we're going to say don dot pin size uh, zero. And then we're going to say um, don dot fill color. And we need to copy the same green. And then we're going to say don dot uh, go to. Our x value is still zero, and we want to go down. Looking at this, so half of 150 would be 75, and then um, maybe half of that. There should be a leaf over here, and then in between the 100, or uh, in between 75 point and halfway between that. So that's three eighths of the total length. Uh, should have a, a leaf here. 
right? So our total height for the stem is 150. So let's do the, the bottom leaf first. So that's 150 times 2 eighths, right? right? Another way to say that is 150 times 1 fourth, right? So another way to say that is 150 divided by 4, right? So that's going to put our turtle uh, down here at one fourth of the height. And then what we want to do is sort of draw a, a circle, a half circle, but not even a half circle. We want to draw like a quarter circle, right? And so to do that, I'm going to start with my turtle uh, facing up, and he's going to start drawing a circle to about here. And then I'm going to turn him and have him draw another quarter circle here, and, and then we'll fill it in green. Okay, so uh, we, we have them go to the proper location and then Don dot uh, set heading. We want him to be facing north. Okay, so that's 90 degrees. All right, and we can just run this and see if Don moves to the right location. Okay, so he's hidden behind the line there, but he is right there and he's facing up. So now when we draw the, uh, the leaf, right, it's going to be a quarter circle. So he'll stop here and he'll be facing west, right? And so we'll have to turn him to face down and then he'll draw another quarter circle. All right, so uh, Don dot circle. Or first we have to do fill color, uh, Don dot fill. Um, so begin fill. Don dot circle, and what's the radius of our leaf? How big do we want our leaf to be? Um, well, let's take a look. So we want it to be maybe about here. So that's about the same as this distance. So it's about one eighth of the size of our whole stem. Now you might be asking, why am I making these numbers um, all relate to the height of the stem? And that's so this is scalable. It would be nice if this, if I could shrink this or or make make this bigger or smaller and put it anywhere on the screen. And if I do this properly, I, I can uh, shrink or grow this. All right, so uh, we'll do a circle, and we want the radius that's going to be about a quarter of our initial height. So our initial height was 50, and so we're going to take a quarter of that. And we're not drawing a whole circle. We're only drawing 90, 90 degrees worth of a circle, right? From zero to 90 degrees, that's a quarter circle. And then we need to turn Don. So he's going to go left 90 degrees. And then we draw another quarter circle. And then we end the fill. All right, so we'll close this. Alright, so that's a nice little flower there, and we want to make another one uh, a little bit higher up. So this is leaf one, and so we can just copy all this for leaf two and make a couple changes. So leaf two, uh, <clears throat> the height we want to go to is not one fourth, right? We had, uh, that was two eighths, right? but we want a little bit higher. So we're gonna go three eighths, right? And then this time, because the way circles are drawn in turtle graphics, the, um, the turtle starts going forward and goes to the left to make the circle. So we need to start the turtle facing out uh, horizontally, right, to the right. He needs to face to the east, which is zero degrees. Uh, at the top would be 90 degrees, that's north. West would be 180 degrees, and then south is 270 degrees. So we need to start him at the heading of zero degrees, which is east, and then he'll make a quarter circle, and then we'll turn him left 90 degrees again, and he'll make a quarter circle again. All right, so uh, the set heading here is the important part. So set heading, instead of starting out to the um, facing north, we want him to start out facing east, which is 90 degrees. And then the 
interest to follow. Right, and we'll try this. Okay, so we got a couple leaves. And now, real simply, if we wanted to finish our flower just with a circle on top, we could do that. That would be nice and easy. Uh, but we'll do a couple a little more interesting things. So, uh, flower head. Uh, we will make a circle on top, uh, and then a, a big circle, and then a little littler circle inside, and a littler circle inside of that. Um, so, to do that, we need to go to the top of the stem, right? So this was the very top of our stem. And so Don dot, uh, let's see, uh, pin up, Don dot go to the top of our stem, Don dot pin down. All right, and then um, let's say, what don dot pin size uh, I guess pin size zero didn't quite work the way we thought it, it still drew a line we see that in the in the leaves so pin size zero might not be a thing right um, so we just need to make sure that our pin color uh, is matches the fill color right so Pin size one is fine, and um, we can say don dot pin color. We can make this one red. Don dot fill color. That is no underscore. That's also red. And then we can say we want to. Uh, let's see. We want to make a circle, but we don't want to start it here. We want this to be the center. So I need to come down a little bit depending on the radius of my circle. So if my radius of, the, of my circle is um, maybe three eighths of the entire width of the stem or height of the stem, we'd need to say, instead of going to zero 150, we need to go to um, minus 150 times 3 eighths All right so we start at 150 and then we subtract 3 eighths of 150 from that All right however we would need to put parentheses around this All right so this would get us mathematically to 3 eighths that would get us here and then we draw our circle around there However, that's not the best way to do this. We could also just say, uh, instead of 3 eighths, instead of subtracting 3 eighths of 150, we could just say times 5 eighths. Okay, so there's some algebra and some fractions in here, but it's really nothing too bad. But you do have to be aware of kind of the sizing. And the only reason we're doing this is so that I can reuse this code. At the very end, I'm going to show you that I can reuse this code. I'm going to put this in a function and we're going to draw flowers all over the screen and different sizes and stuff. So that's why we always have to make this in terms of some uh, some single factor size, right? So at the beginning, the arbitrary size we chose was 150 for the stem. And so we're going to scale everything based off of that. And if we do that, then we can, we can make lots of little flowers everywhere, different sizes and different locations, that sort of thing. That sort of thing. So <clears throat> let's go back here. Uh, we need to come down to five eighths of the height. We need to point the turtle to the right. So when he draws a circle, we'll do that. And so that's Don dot set heading to zero. Then Don dot begin fill. And unfortunately, it is a little bit confusing that begin fill and end fill have the underscore in the name, but the other ones don't. That's just something you're going to have to remember. And so in here, we're going to draw the circle. So Don dot circle. And what radius size do we want to draw this? Well, that's going to be uh, 
three eighths of 150 because that's how much down we went. All right, so three eighths of 150 is this length, and so that's going to mean the circle is going to go around like that. close this and try to run it again. Alright, and then we can add other colors of red in here or a number of different things or you could just leave it as it is uh, for a simple flower. So let's add a few more circles. Um, Let's add maybe a, some sort of purple. So that'll be some red, uh, a little bit of green, and some blue. And sort of a pink. So we'll toss that in there. Now the height here. Uh, we want the circle to be a little bit smaller, so we'll say that this is going to be six eighths. So the, then that'll be two eighths. Instead of six eighths, this will be seven eighths, and this will be one eighth. Now we'll pick another color, <clears throat> uh, maybe more purple this time. Let's go ahead and speed up our drawing. We'll make them go really fast. All right, so there's sort of a simple flower for you. Uh, and you can change the colors, obviously. And that little thing hanging down there is just our turtle, right? So he drew the circle and then stopped. Uh, that red's a little bit too bold. Let's tweak that make it a little bit prettier so we'll make it more of a pink uh, up here so this will be something like that You can play with the colors, make it look, look fancier, as pretty as you want to make it. Okay, so there's a, there's a basic flower. Now the next step that I want to do here is um, show you, since we put everything in terms of that original 150 pixels, right? I can make this into a function and draw flowers all over the screen. Okay, so that's sort of the fi final step here. Um, <clears throat> So let's turn this into a function. We're going to define a function called draw flower. All right. And this function is going to have an x and a y position, but then it also has to have a stem size. All right, we'll just call that stem. All right, and that we're going to base everything else of the flower around that stem size. All right. So to make the function, I'm basically going to highlight all of this code and my editor allows me to hit tab and it will indent all of that code. So all of that code is now inside of this function definition. All right? 
So if I call this function, then it'll just draw the flower. Draw a flower. And if I get rid of these initial parameters, we'll just have the exact same thing we did before. Eventually, I'm going to put these parameters back in and rework the code using those parameters. Right now, we have no parameters in our function. So we call the function with, with no arguments. And then all of this code will run. Also, I'm going to go ahead and hide the turtle just, just because. All right, so what we need to do is add these uh, parameters back in, right? So we have an x position, a y position, and a stem height. And so by default, we might make this stem height, uh, you know, 100 pixels or something like that. <clears throat> I'll say 150. So here, uh, this is going to be the x position instead of 0. So we started out at 0, 0. So x and y were 0, 0, and the stem was 150. So x is 0, and y is 0, and the height is 150. So the x and y is always going to be the position of the bottom of the stem. And you, you could change that if you wanted to, but that, that's how we're going to do this. We'll leave off the default. So stem is because when I call the function here, I'm passing in 150. So the argument 150 then gets stored in the parameter stem when I go down through here. And anytime I reference stem, that's going to be the number 150 in that function call. All right. So we're going to have to tweak this a little bit, the pin size, if we want to make this... Um, bigger or smaller uh, but here we go to let's see we want to go to X and then uh, this is going to be Y plus stem size all right the other thing we have to do is we have to initially move our turtle to the X and Y coordinate right so we need to say Don dot pin up Don dot go to now remember at the very beginning I skipped this because we were just starting at zero zero. But now since we can start at different positions, I have to I have to move where my turtle starts. Right? So I lift up the pin, then I go to coordinate x, y, and then don dot pin down. So this is moving. Alright, we go to our x, y coordinate. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna tweak the stem a little bit here, um, so I guess this is the, the stem. And that's good enough for now. Pin size zero. So here, anytime we have that 150, that is our stem size. So anytime we see that, we need to re replace that with stem stem. 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 Now you could do a find and replace that would probably be more efficient, but I'm already here, so. And I think we're real close now. So what we've done here is all, uh, virtually all of our um, factors, all of our variables, uh, all of the things we pass to different functions are in reference to this value stem. They're in terms of this value stem. So if we change that, everything scales. There's a couple more things we need to work out with x and y. Uh, one thing, whenever we go to an x value of 0, that, that should be x. Right? The only reason we had zero there before is because the initial location was zero, zero. So the x value was initially zero. So all of these go to zero, uh, zero should be go to x. All right. 
And then we need to see <clears throat> what we're doing with this y value. Okay, so most of the time when we, we went uh, this initial value, right, we just went to 0, 150, right? But that's actually in terms of the, X, the y value. So it's, it's 150 on top of whatever that y value is. So anywhere we have a go to with um, an x, there's probably, we're going to need a y plus this, right? So it's all in reference to the original location. So I'm going to, I'm going to highlight this and because of order op of operations, this is going to be calculated first, but I'm just going to copy this y plus and put it in front of any time we have a go to statement for the most part. So we're going to do that y plus stem times 3.8 uh, and then go to y plus, go to y plus, go to y plus, right? So <clears throat> uh, first, let's just run it as is, and it should draw the flower all the same way. So nothing should change initially. And then we're going to change the position. Okay, so that drew fine. Now let's change the position. And if we did this right, then the flower should now be in a different position. So we're going to put it left 100 pixels and down 150 pixels. Okay, so now, now we can move the flower. So this means we can move the flower, we can draw a flower multiple times. So this function call is going to execute all this code, but we can place flowers in different locations. So this one will be positive 100, negative 120. This might be uh, negative 20, negative 170. And then this might be negative 180. 40 right so we'll draw four flowers now so this is this is the power it was is a little bit painful right to abstract these into variables and think about them all in terms of an X and a Y and a stem but once we did that now we now it's very very powerful now we can just draw the flower wherever we want and we can draw multiple flowers all right so Right? And so we can fill the screen with flowers if we wanted to. All right, so that's nice. Uh, we also need to check on the scaling. Can we make them larger or smaller? So let's make uh, this one 100, this one 120, and this one 50, and this one 200. And we're going to see an issue here with the stem size because we just made a thickness of a line for the stem and we didn't scale that properly. So this is going to look a little funny. We're going to have to go back and fix that. So you see they all have the same stem thickness. So you see that this looks like it has tiny little leaves because the thickness of the stem is the same for all of these. And really, we need to probably scale that as well. So if we go back up here to the stem, we need to rethink how we do this. So instead of pin size 10, we're going to say pin size one, but we're going to draw a rectangle instead of just a line. Okay, so <clears throat> to do this, we want to go to the x. Uh, we're starting at x and y, right? So that's the middle of the stem at the bottom, right? So that is right here at the very bottom and in the middle. So we want to draw a rectangle by going out a little bit, up, left, down and then back into the middle. All right, so to do that, um, we have to figure out how wide we want the stem to be. Uh, so we're going to say stem width is going to equal, and we're going to put it in terms of this original stem size. So how wide is this compared to that whole length? Let's see, that would be half of the stem size, that would be half of that, so that'd be a quarter, that would be an eighth, 
that would be a sixteenth. So we're somewhere between a sixteenth and a thirty-second. Let's let's call it a sixteenth. <clears throat> Stem divided by sixteen. And we'll we'll take a look at this. Uh, this might be too thick. We we can change it. But this is going to be our stem width. All right. So if we start out at x and y, that's in the very middle, bottom of the stem. Then we're wanna, gonna want to go to the right, half of the stem width. All right. So that's going to be uh, x plus stem width divided by two. And then we're going to stay at the same y. Then we're going to stay at the same x and go up. So this is going to be y plus the entire stem height. Then we're going to stay at the same y and go to x minus half of the stem width. So we copy this line and duplicate. And then we're going to stay at that x and go down back to, to y. Okay, and then we finish here, right where we started. All right, and we also need fill color on the fill color. No underscore. And we'll use the same fill, fill color as the pin color. And we have to say, on dot begin fill and on dot infill. All right, and we'll close this. And now we should hopefully see more consistent stem sizes. All right? So now you see the tiny flower stem size is much smaller. So this is about right. This is what we're looking for. Uh, so now I can draw these flowers anywhere I want. Okay, so let's have a little bit of fun with that. Let's import the random module. And I'm gonna randomly generate sizes and positions. <clears throat> so for I in range 100, I'm going to draw 100 flowers. I'll delete these. So I need an X value. Oops, lowercase. And I'm going to get that from the random package. There's a function attached to the random package, a library called randint. And I can get a random integer. And so I want that random integer to be somewhere uh, in the range of our width. So the width of our screen is 640, right? So I want it to be between negative 320 and positive 320. So I want it to be between negative width of our screen divided by two and then positive width of our screen divided by two. Then y, I could say, uh, sorry, random dot rand int. Maybe I want that to be between um, negative height of our screen, but to stop it at zero. I don't want any flowers past the halfway point because maybe the background, maybe I'm going to have a green background of grass or something like that, and I don't want flowers growing in the sky. Right, which we can add that here at the end too real quick if we want. So that's an X and a Y value and then a size. So stem size, I want that to be random. And I probably want that to be anywhere between, uh, I wanna make these much smaller. So we'll have this anywhere between uh, 10 and 50, or I don't know, 60. Sorry, that's random.randint. And then I pass in these variables, x, y, and stem. All right, and so now we should get 100 flowers. And this, I might have to cancel this. Let's make it smaller. Let's make it 50. 
and then we'll move up in flowers here in a little bit. So there's some issue. It seems to be drawing some flowers a little bit too low. We can we can investigate what that is. But we see that with the, the flowers are randomly popping up everywhere, and that's that's kind of the goal that we wanted. Okay, we are still seeing them being drawn though, and we can adjust that. Uh, yeah. So here's the problem. This is not. Uh, we don't want negative height. We want negative height divided by two. So it was trying to draw flowers off the screen which is why we were seeing that delay in between some, some of the flowers, All right? <clears throat> so uh, if we don't want to see any delay at all, right? So Don.speed, the turtle himself, he takes time to draw the lines. If we want to turn that off, we can say turtle.tracer 0, 0, so that turns off the turtle animation and it will just draw the shapes that you tell it to, to draw. But when you actually want it to print what you've drawn to the canvas, you have to say uh, turtle.update. So we draw the flower and then we say turtle.update. Right? And this will draw everything almost immediately. Right, you see how much faster that was? And if I wanted to put a little bit of delay in there, I could say time dot sleep, and it'll take you know 0.1 seconds for each flower. All right. So if I had half the screen down here, like a light green as grass. All right, then we'd have flowers popping over everywhere. One of the things we might look at is like this doesn't look right. We have a, a flower that looks to be depth wise behind another flower, except it, it shows up. It was actually drawn in front of it. Right. So that sort of issue, what you would need to do is depending on that Y value, the highest Y value items should uh, should be drawn first. So that way, anything down lower that's closer, right, and and then you can uh, th then it's okay for it to draw because it'll draw on top of something that's that it's behind, or it's on top of something that's behind it, right. So that's an example of just drawing some flowers and moving them around. So maybe instead of uh, this y value here. I could say um, <clears throat> and maybe instead of the stem size I could say for I it starts in I'm gonna start it at 1 and it goes to uh, 51 I'm gonna draw let's say it goes to 101 I'm gonna draw a bunch of these flowers and they're gonna progressively get closer and closer to the screen and pro progressively get larger and larger. So that Y value now is going to be, it's going to start at uh, negative one pixels and we're going to subtract I. So every single flower that we draw is going to be one pixel lower, which means it's going to be in front of the last pixel or in front of the last flower that was drawn. Okay, so we could go, we could move this up to 200 or 300 even. All right, and then the stem size we will say is um, how do we want to do that? We can say the stem size is uh, ten plus. So as we go farther down, as I increases, we want to make the stem size bigger, but we don't want to make it three hundred pixels like that much bigger so we're gonna say something like uh, we're gonna add the I value times some scaling factor that's gonna reduce that so 0 0.3 or something like that you know, in parentheses. all right so we'll see how this how this draws this
So they start getting bigger the closer you get. And all of the ones, as, as they draw, they're always further down, which makes them look closer. And they get bigger as they get closer. Okay. And so you'd probably want to do something like, obviously it looks more crowded down here than it does out there. What you'd want to do is you want more flowers out there because it's a wider view and they're smaller and less up front. And so you could, you could tweak that and you could play with the math, the numbers there. All right. So that's an example of drawing some flowers and you can make different flower heads. You can do all sorts of different things. But the key takeaway there is we abstracted out the size of the flower into these three variables. And by doing that, that was, that was an extremely powerful thing we did because it allows us to position flowers wherever we want and size them all based off of one variable, right? And it was a little bit complicated with the math. Not too bad, it's just basic algebra and, and adding fractions and stuff, but it, it was enough where it, it, you had to think about it, right? Uh, sometimes it helps to get a piece of paper and draw that stuff out. Um, but once you have that, this is now three variables. I can specify three different variables and draw flowers wherever I want, whatever size I want. So it's very, very powerful. So that sense of abstracting out the details, the specific details of one flower and abstracting that out into variables. So then I can make my function um, draw more flowers than just the, the very specific one flower, right? So that's, that's abstraction. Right? We're abstracting out the details of one specific case of a flower into some variables, and that allows us to draw flower flowers wherever we want. So that, that concept of abstraction is very powerful. So I'll scan the code one more time so you can pause and look at it if you want. So there's the setup, the draw flower function, the initial move, drawing the stem, draw a leaf, draw another leaf. And then the flower head is just three circles, but you could do this a number of different ways. And then this would be more or less the main program. So we defined all this stuff above, and then here's where we actually call our function draw flower. And we generate random data there. All right. So hopefully you enjoyed this. Uh, simple introduction. Uh, it got a little complicated, um, but this introduction to turtle graphics and uh, abstracting uh, very detailed uh, functionality into uh, an abstract function that you can reuse. Right? So code reuse is very nice. If you do it right, I can draw 300 flowers by just slightly tweaking some variables. So that's the power of abstraction. All right, that's good enough for this one.